everyone, Simon here from Top Tennis Training and in this video I want to help you hit the perfect slice in three simple steps. So before we get into the steps, let's talk about the grip. So the grip that we recommend is the Continental Grip. Now this is the same grip that you surf with and that you volley with and this is going to allow for the perfect slice. So find that grip and then you're ready to move on to step number one. So step number one to hitting the perfect slice, as soon as you see it's coming to your backhand and you have decided that you're going to slice the ball, you need to start the racket preparation with the right shoulder turning sideways onto the net. This is your right shoulder if you're a right-handed player, left shoulder if you're a left-handed player. So the right shoulder, as soon as you see the ball is coming to your backhand, you're gonna get this shoulder sideways on like so. You're moving to the ball sideways on. A very common thing that I see a lot of players doing is trying to hit either a, a drive backhand, regardless if it's a single or two-hander, or a slice, by moving first sideways and then preparing. If you do that, you won't have time to hit a proper shot and the quality of the shot won't be the same. So that early preparation is crucial. So as soon as you see it's coming to the backhand, this right shoulder sideways on and you're moving to the ball in a sideways on position. Now in that preparation phase, you also want your non-hitting hand, which is my left hand, to be holding the throat of the racket and almost pulling the racket back slightly like this. Now what this does, as you can see, I have an L shape in my arm and my racket, which is basically gonna give me a lot of force over the ball. It's creating that leverage in the wrist and the racket. It's gonna give me force over the ball when I come to the contact point. If I don't have that shape, and if I keep my racket like this, there's only one thing that can happen from here, and that's my racket dropping, and I won't have any power from doing that swing. But by being in this position, I can keep my racket in a very stable and strong position during the contact point, as opposed to being in that position at contact point. Which one would you prefer? To have your racket like this, or to have it stable like so? So once my racket's in that position, I'm now ready for step number two which is to get into a good back position, also known as the power position. So a good back position on the slice would be where the racket head is above my left shoulder. So if I do nothing with my right hand so you can see, the racket is above my left shoulder. Now if I add my right hand to the mix, once again, the non-hitting hand is holding the throat, almost pulling that back, creating that great L shape in the racket and the wrist. Now from here, you can also notice that my left elbow is quite high up because the racket is high up. I don't want to have my elbow like this. I want to be pulling it back like so. So this is creating that backward force and then it's almost pulling the racket back so that when I do release, there's a lot of tension there to be released for the slice. So once again, I'm in that position here and let's take a look at some of the best players in the world reaching a position similar to this. There you can see racket head higher than the left shoulder. It's not on the left shoulder, it's higher up. You've got the chopper grip, the continental grip, and you've also got the great shoulder turn with the right shoulder and the chin almost touching the shoulder in that position, like this. Now also notice that my elbow has a nice bend in it. Now another very common thing that I see a lot of players, a lot of my students have struggled in the past, is having an extended arm when they take it back like so. Now if you have an extended arm in the power position here, there's nothing that's gonna then extend through the contact point. So if my arm's already extended, now it's just a shot from my shoulder using this motion. Whereas if I have a bend in the elbow, and I have a relaxed arm to begin with, now when I extend through the contact, I'm actually using my tricep muscle, which is the back of the upper um, arm. I'm using that muscle to now extend, and that's also gonna give me more racket head speed through the contact point. So I want to have a bend in the arm. A 90 degree angle would be ideal, so somewhere around there. 
so that I can extend through the contact point as I'm hitting my shot. So now that we have the power position, we're going to aim to make contact out in front of the body. So a very common thing again is trying to hit the, the, the slice but hitting it late, hitting it jammed up. You want to extend out and meet the ball out in front of your body. If someone was now to push my racket here, I'm actually very stable in this position. Someone was to push it here, not so stable. Someone was to push it here, not so stable again. So I want to find that balance where it's out in front and I still have a slight bend in my elbow at the contact point so that I have more flexibility with the racket head. If I'm fully extended, it's a very stiff shot and there isn't much space to then maneuver the racket head. If, if I have a slight bend, I can now maneuver the racket still slightly. It's almost fully extended, but with a slight bend. So a good finish is not stopping at contact or finishing high like so. So you see a lot of players, they'll be in between both minds. Should I drive the ball or should I slice it? Now you have to decide if you're gonna slice it, you have to really go for the slice. So you want the strings to still be open slightly on the finish. You don't wanna be coming across the body like so because that is a, a different shot. You want to keep the strings like so. And as I finish, depending on the flight of the racket, so a higher ball, I'm gonna be going more downwards and my strings are gonna be ending up somewhere like this. So very typical, a Federer slice, you'll see him coming from high and cutting across the body. So he's coming across the body's line like this. Lower ball, you're gonna be going more through the ball and upwards. So you might finish with the racket somewhere up here on a lower ball and on a higher ball somewhere down there. Now during that same time my non-hitting hand is also working. So my left hand is going back and down. Now this is to, to counterbalance what's going on with my hitting hand. If I didn't do that I could end up turning too early like this which is going to make me lose control of the shot. So I want to stay sideways on on the finish. I don't want to be opening my shoulders too early on the slice. I want to maintain that right shoulder going through the ball like so with that sideways on position. And a great uh, image to have in your head is finishing with both the right and left arms in symmetry, doing something very similar. Obviously if you've gone through the ball and a little bit higher, the left arm might be a little bit lower than the right hand but you're still having that symmetry of them working as a team and working together, even though they're going in opposite directions. So let's go over those steps once again. Step number one, as soon as you see it's coming to the backhand, getting ready with a good unit turn and starting the racket preparation of holding the throat of the racket with the non-hitting hand. Step number two, reaching a good back position which is going to set up for a good slice. And step number three, making contact out in front and having a good finish using the non-hitting hand to counterbalance what's going on with the hitting hand. So there you have it guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed it, please click that like button leave a comment down below as well and subscribe to the channel. All the best and see you soon.